Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show, it's about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Barry, Season 2, Episode 5. Another great episode. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. I love how much of a mess this episode is. I mean in the best way possible. I mean, this just this episode's a hot hot mess. I love, like, Barry breaking into uh, Ronnie's place. He's like, alright, you're Ronnie, right? Okay, I'm not gonna kill you. Loach sent me here to kill you. Uh, you, you. I need you to go somewhere for, like, a year. And I'm like, what was Barry planning on happening? Like, what are you gonna do? Fake his death in that year? Are you gonna make it seem like he left town? I'm like, how would you have handled that? Like, Loach would still be like, no, track him down and kill him. Like, what were you going to do about that situation? Like, what was a year going to do? Was it going to give you time to set everything up? Because, like, right, Loach has the dirt on you that could um, take you down for uh, Moss's death. So it's like, what were you going to do? And so I love the whole thing about, and, like, I was actually surprised with how well Ronnie was taking it. And then Barry saw, like, all the ta uh, Taekwondo, Taekwondo stuff. I'm like, huh, interesting. And then they went back. And he's like, yo, can I get some stuff out of the bathroom? I was like, he's going to either run, and that's going to be an issue, or he's going to grab, like, a gun or something. Didn't. He came back. out When the fact is he was still over there packing, I was like, oh, you came back. I thought you were going to run. And then he proceeds to kick Barry and knock him out. He was about to call someone. I wonder, was he actually going to call the cops? Which, I don't know if that's really necessarily the smartest thing to do, considering Loach does want you dead. But I guess it's like, right, if you get other cops involved. I mean, I assume he's calling the cops, but I don't know who the hell he's calling. So that's interesting. But then on top of all of that, like, the fact is, I'm like, well, it doesn't matter what Barry says. I mean, we know Barry was trying not to kill him, but it turns into this, like, whole fight sequence. And I love that. It seems like that entire, at least, like, from that point on, everything was like a one-shot. Which, once again, I'm a, I'm, I'm slowly picking on, up on cinematography. Every so, every so once, every once in a while, I start taking notice of it. But I do like how the beginning of this was shot. Like, it wasn't, I'm trying to actually think of, like, how much of this was, like, a one, not one take, but like well, one take slash one shot, or at least very like cleverly hit any cuts, I think. Because I'm trying to think, because like the way the whole sequence was done, like, I feel like it, I, I'm, I'm, I'm misremembering now, because I feel like the episode doesn't have that many cuts in certain regards, but uh, I mean, in, in certain sequences and scenes, they don't have cuts. It's just kind of like they, they, they did a lot of like, um, I don't know, I just thought that was kind of interesting. Because I was about to say, like, do correct me if I'm wrong. Like, they didn't even do the title card because I think they wanted to try and cut away as low as possible. So, I just thought that was so interesting. But, regardless, the fight between Barry and uh, Ronnie. I mean, M Barry does have military training, so he's handling his own. But, Ronnie's got, like, a whole bunch of medals. I'm like, oh, man, this is, this is, this is bad. And, like, every time he's just like, come on, Ronnie. You don't have to do this. Okay, we can just walk out there. My partner, you're going to see us arguing and stuff like that. But, it's cool. Just leave. And, it's like, no. Ronnie's too stubborn. Um, actually, and what I also think is kind of interesting about Ronnie and his daughter, they both have literally next to no dialogue. Ronnie's only dialogue in the episode is, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, Chicago, yeah, hello? I'd say, I guess, I'd say Ronnie said maybe a dozen words in this episode. The only di the dialogue is, like, other than, like, the only main dialogue in the episode is Fuchs and Barry. Um, but I love, like, partway through the fight, Barry's, like, um, and the moment, um, he started, uh, Ronnie started breathing like that, I was like, oh, is it because he smokes or something? It's like, oh, because partway through the fight, his windpipe got crushed, you're like, Ugh. And then eventually, he's doing the whole thing with the whole nunchucks. I was like, oh, we about to do Indiana Jones, which is a weird reference to make considering I don't. Uh, I've never seen the movies, but I've seen the scene of, like, the guys doing the thing with the scimitar, and then Indiana Jones just shoots him. I thought that's what was going to happen, but Barry just sat down. He's like, all right, Ronnie, you hear that? Your windpipe's broken. It's crushed. Like, just chill, dude. And he still keeps going and ends up passing out. It's like, okay, he's dead. So Barry's about to leave, which I think was the stupidest thing he could do is hold up his mask at the time. It's like, oh, it's all resolved. And then his daughter walks in, which, no, I forgot. His daughter has one line of dialogue. She's like, Dad? And so, I love the entire, he's like, Barry's like, honey, little girl, and then, like, it's like, oh, man, she got out the window, I was like, oh, this is bad, and then she was staring, she turned into a feral animal, and I'm like, what the fuck is this, and she's, she's growling, and I'm like, what, what is this, and she's all over the place throwing stuff at Barry, at one point, she gets a knife and starts stabbing him, I'm like, what the, fuck? and then, like, she jumps out the window, well, because at first, like, during the fight, she ends up kind of stopping and calming down, you're like, what the fuck? 
and then she just kind of like turns normal again. I was like, what? And she just walks out the door or whatever, and Barry's just like, and she just hops over a fence. I'm like, what the fuck just happened? So he just goes to see Fuchs. Fuchs is like, oh, it's done. It's like, yeah, take me to a hospital. I messed up. He's like, yeah, 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 sure. It's like, oh my God, we're finally clear. We're done with all of this. Yeah, this is awesome. And it's like, take me to a hospital. I, he's like, I can't take you to a hospital. Too many questions. And it's like, I'll stitch you up. He's like, give me a, a needle and um, some thread. And it's like, what was it you need again? Needle and some thread. And it's like, all right, I'm going to get me some sacks or something. You don't want anything? No. And Barry's just like passing out, uh, which I think is so interesting. I guess it was kind of supposed to be a flashback to maybe after their tour or, at, or I don't know if it was supposed to be like something that actually happened or whether it was supposed to be a metaphor of like everyone's reunited with their family and all Barry has is Fuchs because Fuchs was there because I think I don't know if they specified when Barry lost his parents I don't know if they ever really specified that but Fuchs said made a promise to his dad like oh I'll look after Barry so maybe that was around the time like maybe while Barry's in the military his uh parents that are at least his dad or probably both his parents might have died or something i don't know they might have mentioned that before and i just i'm not remembering but and i love that just barry's just constantly slipping in and out of consciousness and it's like okay i'm gonna stitch you up and everything it's like oh how did that guy do this to you? it's like oh, ronnie didn't do it his little girl is damn you thought you were fucked up before barry oh well it's such a shame that you had to do that oh well you did what you had to do i didn't kill the girl what? Where is she? And I love Fuchs. It's like driving and she, he's like, is that her? And Barry's like, that's a trash kid. Is that her? And then they ultimately, and when the little girl walked past them, like as they were driving, I was like, oh man, oh, they, they totally missed her. And she just sits on the sidewalk and they find her. And I love Barry's like, yo, don't go near that girl. She's, she's not human. He's like, blah, blah, blah. Goes over. Hey, little girl, I got some sad. Do you want to get into my car? Which super stranger danger. And then she proceeds to climb a tree and Fuchs says, hey, get back. And he just watches her and sees her stand on top of the house and he's like, and he just turns around and walks to the car. He's like, yeah, she ain't human. It's like, I told you that. Yeah, I don't know what she is. She's something else. I even love partway through the episode. He's screaming like, what are you? Legitimately the stuff of uh, the little girl, because I think the episode's called Ronnie Lily, so I'm assuming her name's Lily. I love that it's like, you don't find out where her deal is. Her deal is just she is what she is. I'm like, that. this feels like something that could be in a damn horror movie. I love the episode because it's so... This episode's so fucking weird. I love it. It just feels like so tonally in sync while also tonally and just vibe-wise completely different from any other episode. It's like, this is a weird episode. And the fact is that she, like, Barry passed out and woke up again. It's like, oh, I stitched you up. But he did such a shit job. The moment Barry just, like, kind of breathes too much, he snaps all the stitches. And then then, then what does uh, folks big guy did to do? Oh, I'm going to super glue your wound. It's like, you can do that, but you have to pinch it, at least pinch it first, the super glue. It's like, he did just the shittiest job. And it's just like, oh, I've got this super glue on my hands now. And I love that the little girl's just sitting on the roof. It's like, now that you're patched up, you can go up there and get her. It's like, yeah, she's been skulking up there like a gargoyle. It's at night. I'm like, she's been standing there skulking like that the entire time. And then they heard something hit the roof and they're like, ooh, what, what was that? I was like, once again, like, that's something straight out of a monster movie. Once again, second time I've referenced this recently. It's just, it's the first thing that comes to my mind. Jeepers Creepers. Because that thing did that, a, the, the, the Creeper did that a lot. Uh, but like the moment they tried to drive and throw her off, I thought that's what was going to actually happen. She was smart and she held on. And it's like, wait, what was that? Maybe, maybe, I didn't hear anything. Like, I know I heard something. It's like, maybe it could have been an acorn. She slyly slips in the back, bites Fuchs face. It's like, okay, Barry, get your gun and shoot her. So why don't you get her off of you? I'm not going to kill her. I can't. My hands are super glued to the steering wheel. I'm like, oh my fucking God. You're talking about Barry being a fucking idiot, Fuchs. I get it. You were freaked out. You were trying to like, still like, man, this is just, like I said, this episode's a hot mess and I love it. Um, and she's just biting into his chicken. Then she proceeds to completely bite into his chicken. You're like, ah, and she like gets out of the car, spits out a piece of his face and just runs off. And you're like, okay. So Barry goes into the store. Lo and behold, who does he run into? Ronnie. And he's like, oh, Ronnie. Hey, man. And I love Ronnie attacking him. And Barry's like, come on, guy. Come on, man. Don't be an asshole. I'm like, I love it. I mean, to be fair, you tried to handle this in the most peaceful way possible. You're like, yeah, I'm here to kill you, but I'm not here to kill you. Uh, we're going to make you disappear. It's like, once again, Ronnie has every right to be like, no, I'm going to attack you. I'm going to defend myself. I can't trust you. How do I know you're not lying? To you know, so... So that leads to this whole situation of him going ball to the wall in the store. People in the store start freaking out. Like the one guy tried to, the person who, uh, the employee tried to stop him. And then like Ronnie took him down. I'm like, 
dude, you have legitimately lost your mind. I think it's also because Barry was like, right, you're injured, you're not 100%. I guess he had taken some drugs to alleviate some of the pain and stuff. So, he, even at one point, Barry was just standing still and he tried to drop kick Barry and he completely missed Barry. Barry didn't move, he was standing still. And so it turns into this whole tussle and you're like, wow, this is wild. And then lo and behold, who eventually shows up? Lokes. And it's like, oh, he shoots um, Ronnie. And then he turns to Barry. I'm like, is this going to go the way I think it is? He's like, yeah, sir, put your gun down. Barry's like, what are you talking about? And he shoots at Barry. I was like, I, fi I don't know if this was always going to be the end result. I don't know. Because that was my thought last episode was like, I said, most likely Lokes is going to get him to kill Ronnie and then he's going to, I thought he was going to take Barry down, but it's like, because Barry wouldn't have any evidence to prove like, oh, he was doing it because of Lokes. So I feel like Lokes probably always planned to take, because it's like, right, I'm going to get what I want from you, but I'm also going to take you down for killing Moss, but getting what I want first and foremost comes first. But then it's like, Ronnie's not dead. I was like, how's this going to play out? And Ronnie got up and spin kicked Loach killing him must have broke his neck i was like holy crap and then ronnie comes after barry and he gets lit up and they're both dead it's like wow once again your need to kill your ex-wife significant other i'm mean, where is she in this story who knows i uh, ronnie's stubbornness led to all of this him being out of his mind once again his daughter's an orphan out there on her own who knows what the hell that's going to be if she's going to pop up again but it's like yeah so it works out, I guess. Granted, I don't know if they know where Loach hid the, uh, we don't, I mean, he might have had it on him, the evidence, because they still need to get that, because Barry still did confess to Moss's death, and hopefully, um, your boy Gene doesn't end up hearing about that or finding out about that, but it's like, once again, just the crappiest situation, and it, the whole, it turns into a whole crime scene, and Barry's leaving, and Fuchs is there being like, yo, Barry, get in, and Barry's just standing there, because I'm like, I guess he's just like, this is the weirdest fucking day I've ever had. I think legitimately he's, his brain is scattered because I, I can't stress it enough. This is a weird fucking episode and I love it. Holy shit. It's so good. So, yeah. Because uh, now Fuchs also knows about the whole deal Barry made with um, Hank. And he was also saying earlier on, like, right, we need to settle that. Because it's like, Barry's like, yeah, I'm going to train his army. And he's like, oh, you're going an army and heroin? You think you're really just going to walk away from that? So... We'll see where episode six takes us going forward with that. With all that, now that Lokes has been taking out the picture, Barry's response. I mean, to be fair, Barry didn't kill anyone. He played his own part in it. And he thought he killed Ronnie, but he didn't kill Ronnie. And he didn't kill his daughter. And uh, he didn't kill Lokes. It was kind of that situation, interestingly enough, took care of itself. So, yeah. Once again, it's just like that bumbling way of just like, how do you bumble your way out of this? This is the most bumbly bumbly situation i've ever seen i know that's a weird phrase to say but like amongst like your ozarks and your um in the dark where it's just kind of like oh man you just like happen to stumble your way out of this situation like this is the most i've ever seen this is the most absurd level of stumbling your way out of a situation i'm like this is just absurd and it's amazing so i'm excited to see where episode six takes us uh, but really, that's all I want to talk about. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.